Winnie the Pooh and his friends had many adventures with Christopher Robin in the Hundred Acre Wood. In a moment, a good friend of mine will read you some of Pooh's greatest adventures. To play the story right now, press the flashing forward button. You can move through the story by using the forward and back buttons. You can switch between playing the story or reading it yourself time by pressing the quit button. So press the flashing forward button and let's begin now. Like most small boys, the Christopher Robin had toy animals to play with. But his favorite was a bear called Winnie the Pooh, or Pooh for short. Together they played in a wonderful world of make-believe. Their adventures were many, and they happened in a place called the Hundred Acre Wood. Now when Pooh heard his Pooh clock, he knew it was time for something. So he went to his cupboard, got down a honey jar, and inspected his honey supply. Oh bother, empty again. Only the sticky parts left. Now Pooh was not the sort to give up easily. When he put his mind to honey, he stuck to it. So he thought, and he thought. Only this time he thought of Rabbit. Yes, and I like Rabbit because he uses short, easy words like how about lunch and help yourself, Pooh. So Pooh waddled off to Rabbit's house. When Rabbit saw Pooh coming, he cringed because he knew perfectly well what Pooh was looking for. Uh, oh, um, uh, hello, Pooh Bear. Uh, uh, what a pleasant surprise. Uh, uh, how about lunch? Oh, thank you, Rabbit. Pooh sat himself down at the table and tied a napkin around his neck. Rabbit reluctantly pulled out a honey jar. Um, would you like condensed milk or honey on your bread? Both. But never mind the bread, please. Just a small helping... Pooh took the jar from Rabbit, and he ate, and he ate, and he ate, and he ate, until there was no honey left. Finally, in a very sticky voice, he excused himself. I must be going now. Goodbye, Rabbit. Pooh thanked Rabbit, and he turned to leave, but Pooh's tummy, full of honey, only got halfway out of Rabbit's small front door. Oh, 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 help and bother. I'm stuck. Rabbit pushed at Pooh's round bottom. Oh, dear. Oh, gracious. Oh. But it was of no use. Well, it all comes from eating too much. It all comes from not having front doors big enough. Rabbit didn't know what to do, so he ran out the side door of his house to find the one person who could help. Rabbit returned with Christopher Robin. Cheer up, Pooh Bear. We'll get you out. Christopher Robin and Rabbit took hold of Pooh and pulled. And they pulled and they pulled. Oh, it's no use. I'm stuck. Pooh Bear, there's only one thing we can do. Wait for you to get thin again. Well, nobody knew how long that would take, so poor Rabbit tried to make the best of the situation by decorating Pooh's posterior. He found a picture frame and placed it around Pooh's bottom. And then he added some antlers. There! A hunting trophy! And while Rabbit got along with the back end of Pooh, Pooh's front end was visited by his many friends in the Hundred Acre Wood, the first of whom 
were Kanga and Baby Roo. Pooh, Roo has a little surprise for you. Flowers! Honeysuckle! Oh, no, Pooh. You don't eat them. You smell them. Oh. Day after hungry day, night after lonely night, Pooh waited to get thin. And then, one morning, when Rabbit was beginning to think that he might never be able to use his front door again, it happened. He leaned up against Pooh's bottom and... He barked! Christopher Crabbin! Uh, uh, Christopher Rabbin! He bitched! He badged! He booched! Today is the day! Everyone in the Hundred Acre Wood came running to help free their friend. From inside the house, Rabbit pushed on his end of pool, while outside, everyone else pulled on their end of pool. There he goes! Pooh shot out of the hole and flew high overhead into the treetops where he landed in the hole in the honey tree. The bees quickly departed. Don't worry, Pooh. We'll get you out. No worry. Take your time. Pooh was quite content to remain stuck. For you see, he had landed right in the middle of the beehive and some very yummy honey. Yum, yum. Bears love honey, and I'm a poo bear. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Time for something sweet. In the weeks that came, a change of seasons brought a change in weather to the Hundred Acre Wood. One day, when the east wind traded places with the west wind, things got stirred up all over the forest. And on this blustery day, Pooh decided to visit his thoughtful spot. As Pooh thought in his thoughtful spot, his friend Gopher appeared and warned him of the approaching storm. Say, if I was you, I'd uh, think about skedaddling out of here. Why? Because it's Wednesday. Wednesday? Oh. <laughs> then I think I shall wish everyone a happy Wednesday. And I shall begin with my very dear friend, Piglet. Now Piglet lived in the center of the forest, in a very grand house, in the middle of a beech tree. And Piglet loved it very much. Whew. <laughs> yes. Oops. You see, it's been in the family a long time. It belonged to my grandfather. Oh, oh that's his name up there. Trespassers Will. That's short for Trespassers William. <laughs> Just then, a small wind caught Piglet and blew him directly into Pooh. Happy Wednesday, Piglet! Then the wind got bigger, and it picked up Piglet and carried him high into the air. Ah! Pooh grabbed hold of Piglet's scarf and held on tight. Oh! Poo, 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 poo. I'm on reveling! Hang on tight, Piglet! Piglet went higher and higher into the sky, just like a kite, while Pooh held tight to his unraveling scarf. Then, with the blustiest, gustiest gust of all, Piglet was blown right up against the window of Owl's house in a tall tree. Well, I say now, someone has pasted Piglet on my window. A moment later, Pooh was pasted right next to it. Well, well, Pooh too. <laughs> this is a surprise. Owl opened his window, and Pooh and Piglet blew in. <laughs> Am I correct in assuming it is a rather blustery day outside? Yes, sir, Owl. It's a very, very blustery day outside. Oh, yes. That reminds me. Uh, happy Wednesday, Owl. While they visited, the wind blew harder and harder. It rocked Owl's house back and forth, back and forth, until the tree and Owl's house crashed to the ground. Well, I say now, someone has... Uh, Pooh, uh, did you do that? I don't think so. 
As soon as Christopher Robin heard of the disaster, he hurried to the scene. What a pity. Owl, I don't think we'll ever be able to fix it. Eeyore arrived and looked gloomily at Owl's demolished house. If you ask me, when a house looks like that, it's time to find another one. That's a very good idea, Eeyore. Might take a day or two, but I'll find a new one. Several hours later, the blustery day turned into a blustery night. To Pooh, it was a very anxious sort of night, filled with anxious sorts of noises he had never heard before. Pooh jumped into bed and peeked out from under the covers. Oh, is that you, Piglet? Now Pooh, being a bear of very little brain, decided to invite the new sound in. So he opened the door and looked out. He was suddenly pounced on by an unfamiliar, springy sort of character. Grinning, the new arrival perched on Pooh's tummy. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm Tigger. Oh, you, you scared me. Yeah, sure I did. Everyone's scared of Tiggers. Um, who are you? I'm Pooh. Oh, um, poo. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, what's a poo? You're sitting on one. I am? Oh, well, glad to meet you. Name's Tigger. T I double G R. That spells Tigger. But what is a Tigger? Well, <laughs> he asked for it. Several hours later, the bluster... Just as Tigger finished his song, Pooh pointed to the mirror. Well, then what's that over there? Looks like another Tigger to me. Oh, no, it's not. I'm the only Tigger. Watch me scare the stripes off of this imposter. <laughs> Tigger turned and bravely growled at the image in the mirror. <laughs> the image growled right back. <laughs> Tigger ran and hid under a table. Uh, uh, is, 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 uh, uh, is he gone? He's gone. You can come out now, Tigger. Tigger? Uh, hello, <laughs> I'm Tigger. Ow. Tigger bounced Pooh onto the ground again and invited himself to stay for a little snack. Pooh reluctantly offered him some honey. Honey? Oh boy! <laughs> honey! That's what Tiggers like best! But when Tigger took a big scoop from the honey jar, he found he didn't like honey at all. Yuck! Tiggers don't like honey! Yuck! That icky, sticky stuff is only fit for heffalumps and woozles! You mean elephants and weasels. That's what I said. Heffalumps and woozles. Tigger explained that these strange creatures were especially fond of honey. But before Pooh could find out any more, Tigger turned to leave. Well, I'd better be bouncing along now, chum. Uh, cheerio! <laughs> Tigger bounced out the door, leaving a very frightened Pooh to wonder if there really were heffalumps and woozles about. So all night long, Pooh tried to stay awake, keeping watch over his precious honey pots. Now the very blustery night turned into a very rainy night. Pooh kept his lonely vigil until at last 
he fell fast asleep. In the morning, Pooh awoke to find his house flooded with water. He went to his mirror and spoke to the Pooh staring back. Is it raining in there? It's raining. else gathered at the driest spot in the forest, Christopher Robin's house. There Christopher Robin discovered Piglet's message in the bottle and read it aloud. Help! P Piglet! Me! Ow! You fly over to Piglet's house and tell him we'll make a rescue. As Owl flew over the flood, he spotted two tiny objects below. One was little Piglet, caught in a whirlpool, the other was Pooh, trying to get the last bit of honey from his honey pot. Owl told them that a rescue was underway, but poor Piglet was growing more nervous by the moment. I, I beg your pardon, Owl, but I, th I, th I think we're coming to a flutterfall, um, a, a flateral fall, a, 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 a very big waterfall. Both Piglet and Pooh toppled over the falls and down into the pool below. When Pooh opened his eyes, he found himself floating downstream on Piglet's chair, with the honey pot floating right alongside. Up ahead, Christopher Robin saw Pooh approaching. Pooh, thank goodness you're safe. Have you seen Piglet? Just then, a familiar looking head popped up out of the floating honey pot. Oh, excuse me, I have. Oh, what I mean is. <laughs> here I am. Christopher Robin carefully lifted Piglet out of the jar. Pooh, you rescued Piglet! I did? Yes, and it was a very brave thing to do. It was? You are a hero! I am? And as soon as the flood is over, I shall give you a hero party. Soon after that blustery day, Christopher Robin kept his word and organized a hero's party to celebrate Pooh's rescuing Piglet. Attention everybody! Now this party is a hero party because of what someone did. And that someone is... But before Christopher Robin could finish, Eeyore trudged up to the table. I found it. Found what, Eeyore? House for Owl, if you want to follow me. I'll show it to you. Everyone followed Eeyore to see the new house he had found for Owl. But to their surprise, Eeyore stopped in front of... Piglet's house! Why are you stopping here, Eeyore? This is it. Owl's new house. Piglet gulped a very big gulp. It's the best house in the whole world. 
Tell them it's your house, Piglet. Oh, no, Pooh. This house belongs to our very good friend, Owl. Uh, but, Piglet, where will you live? I... I... I, uh, I guess I shall live, um... I... I suppose I... I shall live... With me. You shall live with me. Won't you, Piglet? With you? Oh, thank you, Pooh Bear. Of course I will. Pooh put his arm around Piglet while Christopher Robin knelt beside him. Piglet, that was a very grand thing to do. And so the one hero party became a two hero party. Pooh was a hero for saving Piglet, and Piglet was a hero for giving Owl his grand home in the beech tree. really want to quit, click on the picture of Rabbit. To play the story again, click on the picture of Winnie the Pooh. Click on Owl to sample more CD read-alongs and other Disney music and story products at Disney.com. <laughs>